Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. Um, I had to go somewhere with a hat on earlier and you don't want hat heads. So we just threw one baseball cap out and threw some fedora in. Uh, I'm super excited to be here with the one and only Chris Rock with Rock Pit Brewing. What's up, Chris? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, man. Just uh, sitting outside and drinking some beer and, and some water. Yes, I'm about to join him, guys. Uh, if you could see the beautiful thing that they brought me over uh, so that I could taste some of them. And um, I'm very excited. But enough about me. They want to get to know you. So tell them a little bit about you, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like you said, my name is Chris Rock. My uh, my business partner, I have a couple business partners, but the one that um, is in the name Rock Pit is my cousin, Jeremy Pittman. Uh, and Jeremy Pittman is related to nearly everyone in Conway. <laughs> Um, so he knows everyone. <laughs> so that's how you know him. Um, but no, so, you know, just to give you a little bit of backstory, Jeremy and I, that, that's my wife's cousin. And I hadn't really known Jeremy probably until about 2015 when he opened up his homebrew shop over on Curry Ford. Um, went in there, started homebrewing again, and uh, just he threw a, created a great relationship with him. Uh, one day I walked in. And he said, you know, one of my dreams was to open up a brewery when I opened up this place and I just didn't have the wherewithal, the funds, whatever. And uh, he's like, do you want to open up a brewery? I said, yeah, you know, uh, he's a lot bigger than I am. So I couldn't say no. <laughs> uh, so I was forced into, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so we started going back and forth and coming up with, with different names like Eola and Sandcastle and Orange Grove and all these Orlando based things. And, um, he, uh, we finally just said, you know, let's do like our names, Pit Rock or, or Rock Pit or something like that. And as soon as I said Rock Pit, he's like, yes, that's <laughs> it. Uh, and then I had homebrewed several years ago with my other business partner, Sean Burke. And at the end of brewing with him, he said to me, one day I'm going to open up a brewery. And uh, long story short, we hooked back up and he's like, I gave him a beer that I made it, uh, a homebrew of and I won a contest. And he goes, you know, this is something that I want to do. I want to open up a brewery. And I said, you know what? That's funny. You should say that. My cousin wants to meet you. Uh, and then we established a business 2017, uh, got our place in uh, January 2018, took a year to build it out. And then we opened up in February 2019. So we've been open up for a little more than a year now. You had a big to do. I remember mm -hmm. lots of people were invited. You had a, a big kickoff. Yes. You know, I'd love to see any kind of local business, um, especially locally brewed, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, that was a terrible joke. Uh, but I, I love to see the success. You guys are really great on social media. Um, you ha you are not afraid to to be a proponent in your community that I know, which is really awesome. No. Uh, but so, so talk about what transpired or how you guys began to realize that COVID-19 was going to make an impact. And then what did you do? Yeah, so that was interesting because I saw what I saw were other states and uh, locales like in North Carolina, South Carolina, they were starting to shut stuff down. And as soon as I started seeing that stuff shut down, I said, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that handles all the marketing, the, the technology. Well, Sean, too, uh, but the website and all that. And I said, I need to do something right away because we're going to be we're going to be shut down. And uh we're gonna only, only gonna be able to do to go. And so one of my favorite things to do is make it extremely easy for people to do business with me. Uh, and so I set up the website, I put a online store and it's extremely easy to go on there and order and then come here and pick it up and, and take it to go. So that along with some other things that we had to pivot super quick from in-house tap room sales, which is our lifeblood to going into 100% out the door. Uh, so we had to scramble a little bit there. We were we, we rely on having cans so that you can take cans with you and we run out of cans. So th the greatest thing about being a brewery is that all the other breweries, yeah, we're competitors and we wanna sell more beer than the other guy, but we also help each other out. So we ran out of cans. So we went to Sideward, we went to Ivanhoe, we went to Hourglass and we went and picked up a bunch of cans from them and they were so gracious. Uh, because without that, we were dead in the water. Uh, we wow. had ordered cans and like everything else at that time, everything was taking an extremely Forever. long time. 
to get here. So um, they sustained us and, and we were able to return the favor to a couple of other breweries that were running out of cans. And so that's that's like one of the coolest things about this industry that's is very cool. It feels like the community, the brewing. I've had Glenn on the show from yes, Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe yeah. um, uh, it seems like your community definitely very much more cohesive. Mm -hmm. uh, never any, you know, there's I mean, I ho I'm hoping it's because you're drinking amazing um, craft beer all day. Yeah. So of yeah. course, you're in a good mood, but yeah. it just seems like everybody is very supportive. Absolutely. And, that, you know, again, that's one of the best things about this is that um, even in times of good and bad, we're all we're all trying to do stuff together. Like we we're doing a, a big collaboration with Tactical Brewing uh, over in, in Baldwin Park for July the 4th. Uh, so we all try to do cool things like that. You know, it's, and again, it's one of like collaboration things are, are really cool, too. There's not a lot of that outside of this industry, and you're not going to go to maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here, but two Italian restaurants are going to come together and create a dish and then serve it, right? Uh, you know, what? it would be interesting to see if yeah. if there's more collaboration out there because of this going on. Yeah, um, I, I feel like the communities come together, but you you guys are always in the. Um, thank you, Odalis. I'm looking at people are sending you love, by the way, Chris. Okay. Um, you can look at it later, uh, okay. but. Uh, but I think that you guys are always kind of forefront in the community. Um, you seem like you're super involved. I mean, with all of the family connections, of course, you're super involved. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like community is important to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we rarely turn down an opportunity to help someone um, in need or, or somebody that needs some presence somewhere. Uh, you know, the whole dog thing, but there's a of course, the love bugs are back. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, was it the Pixel Fun came here and did a big show, and that was awesome. Um, anytime that we can do some fundraising, any anything like that, we're always giving money to the community. We advertise in the Boone uh, High School, uh, what are they, not the yearbooks, but the uh, the programs, you know, the sports programs. Right. So yeah, we're always trying to. I mean, we're trying to get back to a community that's given to us. I mean. To be quite honest, they've given us way more than we've given them as far as uh, support. Uh, we try to do as much as we can for them. But, man, the community around here is insanely supportive. And it's been it, – seriously, we, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be a success without them. So we try to get back as much as can. All right. So talk about Rock Pit. Talk about – because I have a very delicious sour in front of me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you want to tell me what I'm going to be drinking and then kind of give us a little bit of – History. I think people think, all right, so they're a brewery. What does that mean? They make one type of beer. Uh, but, you know, you all do a lot. So, yeah, yeah. So we're share. we've we've uh, we've done a lot of uh, of learning over the last year. And one of the things that we learned was uh, people love new things. And so our business model, uh, even when we were um, shut down as far as being on site uh, consumption, is release a new beer every week. Uh, and that's kind of a cool concept. Well, not a lot of places can do that. They can't just have a new food item every week or something. And I see some people doing it, but uh, that's one of the things that made us super successful because what happens is people see the new thing. They're like, oh, got to have that it's next week. Oh, got to have that. Right. So they, they constantly see a rotation from us. And we have 20, 20 beers on tap at, uh, well, if we don't run out of it all, like we <laughs> most of the time, uh, but anywhere between 15 and 20 beers on tap and they're all our beers. So it is not like we have 17 IPAs. We have, you know, a few IPAs. We have a, like right now we have a, a Schwartz beer and a couple sours and uh, some lagers and some blonde beers, anything that you kind of like, and it's out there in the community, like you can go to cross the street to ABC and pick up. We have, and we make here, uh, not all at once, but we have, <laughs> We have a lot of variety here, and that's another thing that people really like about us is that they can come here, and if they like multi beers, guess what? They have a couple options. They do like that hoppy beer. Hey, we have some IPAs for you. So I like that you speak the consumer language too, because yes. when I go in, I'm like, I need that one that's sort of hoppy, but not that hoppy. And yeah. you guys, speak. so I want to, I want to get to the sour. So sure. explain what a sour is. The first time I went in, like to a place that I felt was like was true craft beer. And I saw sour on the menu. The first thing I thought of is, why would I ever drink anything sour? I'm so confused. Well, uh, but, so I had to, but I had to learn. Somebody educated me there at the place. Yeah. And so tell them so about it. 
it's you know sort of like whiskey sours right they're they're not super sour they got some sweetness there and and all that but it depends on so there's a huge variety of sours now right you have wild sours which really realistically is they take wild yeast and they put it in the beer and let it do its thing and it creates just these wild flavors in it um we are we don't do those uh fun little fact about that is if you get a wild yeast in your beer anywhere like if it's any one wild spore can kill your whole brewery and you have to shut everything down clean it all out and then Ooh. start over again. so we don't we don't mess with the wild yeast side. Yes. <laughs> so we do something called um kettle souring which essentially what that means is we make a beer we sour it sort of like um almost like a, a yogurt type of sour and um it creates a very tart beer uh, and when you, it's kind of a misnomer, you know, sour is not really the name that we should call it, but it's more of a tart beer. So like the beer that you're drinking is actually what, what's called a Berliner and Berliners, um, they're, I'm not saying, yeah, they're from Germany. Um, and so what it is over there in Germany is you have a couple of choices there. And traditionally the way that you, you drink that is either plain. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's a crowler there. You either drink a plain or they'll, They'll put, they'll pump some um, raspberry syrup or woodruff syrup. Now it's super hard to find woodruff around here, so we're just doing the raspberry syrup right now. But what you end up with is just a really nice tart beer with some sweetness from that syrup, uh, and it just—it's a very easy drinking, clean beer. A little it's bit of tart there and delicious. sweet. It's yeah, it's yeah. delicious. Yeah. You know what? And the first thing I was—I did the thing when whenever I taste anything tart. Yeah. But it was a good. You know, it's that good tart yeah, you like yeah. the tart so this yeah. is delicious well, thank yeah, you. i was yeah. afraid the first time i i just didn't know what i was going to get my you know so i'm ordering stuff like a rookie would do and um i'm still not a pro trust me i yeah. learn every day because you all are so creative so let's talk a little bit as i'm enjoying about yeah. the creative process because obviously you get to choose mm -hmm. uh, and you get to mix and match and who would have thought to add the yogurt i mean so tell yeah, us it's about not really, it's not really yogurt. I, I i always try to try to like come up with a, a an analogy there, but it, it is something called lactobacillus. It's actually a beer thing that we put in there that does sour the beer. But either way, so uh, yeah, creativity that most of the creativity that comes from from the brewery on the uh, on the marketing side is me. On the beer side, that's Jeremy, man. He he just comes up with the coolest concepts, and he'll con him and and our brewers will come up with some stuff, and they're like, hey, let's just brew something and see what happens, and. Uh, we've had so many serendipitous things happen where we're, we go, all right, let's give that a shot and see what happens. Uh, and like the, the beer we're, we're doing this week, uh, we first did it, I believe in May of last year, it's called uh, Jolly Quencher. It's a watermelon goza. Uh, so it's a sour, uh, but it's sort of like a salt water sour. Sounds weird, but it's super delicious. It tastes like a sour watermelon Jolly Rancher. Uh, and again, what it was is that we made our, our, base beer or goes a beer and then we went over to a place called Florida bulk that has a bunch of watermelon and put the watermelon in there and uh, a day later we tasted it and we were all just stunned we're like holy crap that tastes amazing <laughs> and it was it was really bizarre so like uh, February March April May of last year the number one selling beer here was our blonde ale June and July when we had we were constantly churning out Jolly Quencher, that was the biggest seller. It sells out so quick because it's a refreshing beer. Uh, people love that the fact that it's almost like a melted Jolly Rancher <laughs> that they're drinking. Uh, <laughs> and the cool thing, yeah, and the cool thing is it's it's a simple beer. There's not any sugar added, anything like that. It's literally watermelon that we've added to it. So and it, it's very simple. What's the what's the process like? See, I, I would be afraid that I would never get anything done. If all of uh, my, my vision is you just sit and you, you work some, but you taste all day. Nah, you know, we, we've become disciplined. I think when we first started, it was, uh, it, you know, we, we enjoy it, but we also get disciplined. Sorry, I'm waving by the one of mine. Bye, Rach. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we become disciplined on that. Uh, you know, at the end of a shift, yeah, we'll have a couple beers and we'll be all right. But yeah, most of the time, Back in the brewery, they're working so hard that if they have one or two beers, it's, it's immediately out of their system, anyways. But it, it's not a, it's not a it's not an easy gig being a brewer. Uh, there's a lot of laborious activities that you have to do. So it's you sh you're going to sweat back there, even if, when in our cool brewery where it's 73 degrees, you're going to sweat because it's it's hard work and you're near you know boiling water. 
most of the time. Yeah, I, I have seen the from the outside in. Mm -hmm. um, looked at, uh, and I there was there's also someone, sort of in the industrial area era that has um, a brewery that I've been inside, and it's just it's I can see that that part is really hot. Yeah, are you talking about over near Universal? No, it's. I think his name is John. He's an uh, orange blossom. Oh. Or so. So uh, you're talking about Orlando Brewing? Yes. Yeah, he's over on Atlanta. He's about a one one mile away from here. Yeah, that's. But I, I, that's where I saw the what you're talking about. You you almost feel you're like okay, I don't want to be in there. Yes, <laughs> I definitely want to be. Out here. You want to be out in the tap room drinking, not back in the back hot area. Yeah. So tell me about the second beer that I'm going to try. Uh, I've already well, finished my sample. I didn't finish the whole beer. Okay. Uh, my sample. I was gonna say that's pretty impressive. You drank yeah. fast. <laughs> no, I'm trying to behave, Chris. I don't know why, but I'm I don't know what you're doing that for. That's no fun. <laughs> uh, so, which one are you trying now? I'm not. I'm. This is the. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's United, called, right? Yeah. So that's uh, called Savages United. We have a line of beers here called uh, um, Savages, and so a savage is a coal miner. Uh, by the way, if, I can't. I don't know if you can tell, but we're a very we're a coal mining centric brewery. I forgot to go into that. We'll come back to that in a second. But a savage is a guy that was if he was a coal miner that would go into the deepest, darkest pits of, of the coal mines, uh, and they would always have that colloquial term of he's a savage because he's just going down and doing the dirty work that no one else wants to do. Uh, and so when we were coming up with names for our beers, we're like that would be a really cool name for our New England IPAs, uh, and so that's why we. We have it. So that beer there is actually an interesting story. Back uh, when this all started, there was a brewery up in Brooklyn called uh, Other Half Brewing. And what they wanted to do was help out the hospitality community. So they put together this thing called All Dot Together, right? All Together Dot Beer. And if you can go to the website and see all the breweries that are, are part of it. What we all did as a brewing community, a lot of us, um, sorry, not yet. Yeah, sorry, he, my, my my buddy's pinging me right now. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Blue collar centric, not coal mining. <laughs> we are coal mining themed brewery. Uh, either way, uh, so he, they they created this collaboration, and so what they did was give you the artwork, they gave you the the recipe, and well, loose recipe, and said, hey, if you want to make a West Coast style, which is a bitter IPA or a hazy or New England, which is uh, more of a hazy sort of not as bitter IPA. Let's do it. But you have to commit to either giving the funds, the profits from that back to your own workers that have been affected or the community that's been affected. So what we did is we're going to take the profits from that and we're going to give it to the Orlando Bar Bartenders Guild. Well, it's Bartenders Guild because what they're doing is a really cool thing is that if you have been affected, you can get a grant from them to put some money in your pocket during uh, wow. when you're unemployed. So we thought that that was a cool, cool That's thing. Cool. And um, luckily, we've been we've been um, we've been fortunate that none of our bartenders have had to um, we haven't had to furlough anybody. We've made up the funds for them if they were getting less tips. Um, so we've been very fortunate to to keep them out of the. <laughs> Whole unemployment hell. That's, that's, a, huge, that's a huge plus. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. So this is delicious. But tell me yeah. what kind again. What am I drinking? So that is a New England or a hazy IPA. Uh, so what what those t traditionally are is they are uh, they're IPAs, and they're they're hoppy, but they're not bitter. Uh, and they're going to usually be a little bit more sweeter, uh, just because there's not as delicious. much bitterness. Um, and they're a little more full bodied. Uh, so people that don't like IPAs. In fact, one of my friends, Scott, he doesn't, he didn't like IPAs at all. And we made a beer here called Haka Savage made with all New Zealand um, hops. And it was delicious. I mean, it was just one of the best New Englands that we ever had here. Well, he hated IPAs until he started drinking that. And then, so what happened was he started drinking another New England IPA and then he, another, and then he would try an IPA. Now he's a full on IPA. Lover. <laughs> so there's this progression that goes, if you, if you, you don't like IPAs, reason. yes, if you don't like IPAs, <laughs> try a New England or a hazy IPA, get your feet wet with that. And then what's going to happen is you're going to go, mm, I kind of like hops. And then you're going to be a full on neck beard, uh, you know, trolling your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <love it. laughs> uh, neck. Neckbeard is a as a reference to Jeremy. He's got the big old beard, so yeah. You know what's great about IPAs is you really for me I had to find like that like that gentleman like your friend. I had to find one that I liked because yes. the first one I had, I mean, it just it just slapped you in the face. It was 
<laughs> so yeah. I ha I'm like, okay, is there anything less? I don't want to get hurt out of this relationship. <laughs> I want to, I want to uh, taste it and kind of enjoy it. Right. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I can, I can feel that. You know, the one that I have a hard time with a lot is when they, uh, the overly coffee ones. Mm. Okay. And I, I like a coffee. But sometimes I'm like, where's the beer? I want a little bit of a beer taste. So yeah. and I know that that's just a mixture thing, right? You got to play yeah. with it, figure it out. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's just one of those adjuncts that you add is coffee is is depending on what you're drinking. Like the, I know this is going to sound weird. There's a um, brewery out in uh, Sanford called Deviant Wolf. And one of their their most popular beers is called Sour Manjaro. And it is a coffee sour. It doesn't sound like it would be good. But it is delicious and i think uh if you ever get matt or jonathan on the show that's one beer you have to try because it's one of, like my wife loves that beer it's like one of her she goes there she drinks <laughs> half a jar and so am i but you you're right so some coffee beers like um there's one from terrapin that's a super coffee um uh, wake and bake is what it's called and <laughs> wake and, bake. Wake and, and bake. very very high uh, abv beer but it also is uh, super coffee, right? It's it's like you're drinking a coffee, and then uh, about a halfway through that bottle because it's twelve percent, you're going you're going. Uh, that's not yeah. Coffee. That's the, yeah. that's the right. interesting thing about yeah. those. Uh, some and in the early days, I remember one of my favorite things is when they would put the alcohol content on there, and you would really begin your evening with the one that had the most. Um, <laughs> Terrible, terrible thing yes. you do, but yes. you know you learn. You also learn that it's like a wine or a scotch or a whiskey. Mm -hmm. You've got to kind of figure out what your taste Except is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So, how can people reach you? What can they get? What can they buy from you? You said you have the website. Um, talk a little bit about that so that I can drive as many people to Rockfit as possible. Yeah. So right now, uh, you know, if you if you're still if you're doing the shelter in place and you want to stay at home and you still want to enjoy some craft beer. Uh, you can go to rocketbrewing.com right on the home page. There's a link. You can just order from us, uh, place your order, come in, pick it up and, and go. Uh, there's no, um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Uh, Love we're, it. All, we're on, um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that at, at rock pit brewing. Uh, you'll see a lot of weird stuff from us just cause we're not normal. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, lots, lots of memes, uh, lots of, lots of fun stuff. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're kind of out of the ordinary with a lot of the things that we do and that, that's on purpose. So, so what I have to ask, cause I had, I had people asking me when I began to share, mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite beer to drink? So, uh, like one on of them. Our, our menu. Yes. You're okay. Menu. Yeah. So any of the savage beers like you're drinking there, but right now I'm drinking like in this mug right here, this is my mug. Um, I'm drinking mug. miners light. Um, so Miner's Light is our, our, our lager. Uh, if you ask the majority of brewery owners or mostly brewers, the people that are making the beer, they just love lagers and um, pilsners and extra special bitters. Those are the style of beers that, that we really like because they're clean and they're harder to make and they're harder to get right. And when you get it right and you nail it, you're just so proud that you're like, damn, I got a lager right on. And this beer right here is so dead on. It is so good and refreshing. It doesn't matter if it's 32 degrees outside or I don't know how hot it is again, 90 degrees. It is a perfect beer to just enjoy, snuggle up to and and, and consume in mass yeah. amounts. Because it's only 5%, so you're you're okay with it. <laughs> you're okay with drinking it uh, a little bit more than the 12 percenters. Well, that was awesome, man. I want to try more beers. Um, so tell, I, I can't wait. I want to do a show where I can come in there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that I think would be good to show people the brewery. That's the plan anyway. Yeah. Uh, but until then, I put the website down at the bottom. It's scrolling, Rock Pit, Rock Pit Brewing. Chris That's Rock, you're a joy, man. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking time out. Thanks yep. to Colleen for her help, Colleen yep. Murphy. Um, you guys are amazing. So go visit when you can, but order from them, Rock Pit Brewing. All right. Thanks, buddy. Have a great one. Thank you, you so well. much. Thank you, guys. All right, Thank guys. You for we'll, be, we'll be back later. Reach out to him. See how easygoing the beer guy is? It's, it's really awesome. Yes. <laughs>